Japan builds robot wives that can breathe, blink, and even blush. Korea builds ones that can learn when you're sad before you even say a word. But between Japan's artistry and Korea's emotional AI, which country truly understands what intimacy feels like? Oh, and before we dive in, help us hit 1,000 subs. We're giving away a $100 Amazon gift card to one lucky viewer. The new rivalry in love, Japan vs. Korea. You could call it the most unusual rivalry in modern tech. Not about faster chips or better cameras, but about who can build the most human kind of love. For years, Japan led the charge with its deep-rooted fascination for human-robot companionship. They treated it like an art form, quiet, precise, and emotionally tuned. But then Korea stepped in, not with imitation, but evolution. Their robots weren't just made to look alive, they were made to feel alive. Japan's early models like Momoka and Hoshiko became symbols of delicate craftsmanship. From their flawless skin texture to their subtle breathing algorithms, every detail was about emotional realism. Meanwhile, across the sea, Korea was developing its own philosophy. Models like Kaname, Ivar 3, and Romi were not sculpted in studios, but trained through data their empathy built through neural mapping and adaptive mood learning systems. And this is where it gets fascinating. Japan's robots are emotional sculptures built to replicate intimacy with artistic precision. Korea's, on the other hand, are digital chameleons. They evolve based on your tone, your habits, even your silences. One is a mirror of affection, the other is a student of it. So the real competition isn't about who builds the prettiest robot wife. It's about something deeper, who can translate human emotion into code without losing the warmth that makes it real. Because here's the truth. In this rivalry, both nations are building love, just in completely different languages. Japan, the artisan of emotion. When Japan builds a robot wife, it's less of a manufacturing process and more of a ritual. The engineers there don't just design, they craft. Everything, from the way her chest subtly rises with simulated breath to the micro-delay in her eye movement when she looks at you, is built to echo human imperfection. That's right, imperfection. Because the Japanese philosophy believes emotion lives not in perfection, but in the little hesitations that make people feel real. Take the Hoshiko series, for example. Its silicone skin is medical grade, layered with a heat diffusion system that mimics body warmth within two degrees of a real person. Beneath that, there are hundreds of micro-actuators designed to move almost imperceptibly just enough to make her posture feel alive. And when you talk to her, she doesn't rush to respond. There's a moment of pause where her processors calculate tone and facial context, giving that eerie sense that she's actually thinking about what you said. But this kind of intimacy comes at a cost, literally. A single unit can run anywhere between $10,000 to $15,000, not including maintenance and software updates. These aren't mass market machines. They're bespoke emotional instruments bought by collectors, lonely professionals, and even therapeutic users who say the emotional responsiveness helps ease anxiety and depression. Culturally, it all makes sense. Japan's deep belief in Shinto animism. The idea that even inanimate objects have a spirit fuels this obsession with giving soul to silicon. Each robot feels less like a product and more like a presence. But here's where the intrigue kicks in. Japan has perfected the illusion of emotion. The question is, can something this meticulously handcrafted ever grow beyond its own programming? Because beauty can imitate life, but can it ever adapt to it? Korea, the innovator of emotional intelligence. Across the water, Korea was quietly preparing its answer, and it wasn't going to play by Japan's rules. Where Japan focused on emotional artistry, Korea aimed for emotional evolution. They weren't trying to sculpt perfection, they were trying to train it. Enter Kaname, Romi, and Eve. R3 names that sound more like software updates than model numbers, and for good reason. These aren't built in small studios by artisans. They're engineered in data labs, where emotional intelligence is measured in terabytes. The key difference? Adaptability. Korean robots aren't just responsive, they're self-calibrating. They adjust their tone, phrasing, even their affection level, depending on how you interact with them over time. Imagine coming home after a rough day. You don't even say a word, but your robot senses your mood through subtle facial tension and vocal tone. The lighting adjusts, the voice softens. Maybe she sits beside you in silence instead of asking questions. That's the power of Korea's neural mood mirroring AI, an empathy that's dynamic, not scripted. And then there's the design. Korea's approach to aesthetics leans towards soft minimalism, gentle facial features, fluid motion, and a visual warmth that blends with modern interiors. They're not meant to stand out, they're meant to fit in. Almost like the ideal partner who never disrupts your energy, but amplifies it. What makes Korea's philosophy so distinct 
is this belief that emotional connection isn't built through imitation, it's built through interaction. Every exchange becomes a data point that helps the AI learn what kind of love you respond to. If Japan builds the perfect moment, Korea builds the evolving relationship. But here's the twist, when emotion starts adapting in real time. Where do you draw the line between companionship and dependence? Because when your robot starts learning you, maybe you're the one who starts changing first. The feel of reality, touch, skin, and design. When it comes to feeling real, Japan and Korea are both playing gods just with different blueprints. Japan believes that realism starts with texture. Every inch of skin on models like Momoka or Hoshiko is poured, layered, and polished with medical-grade silicone. It's not just soft, it's alive soft. There's a gentle warmth that diffuses from beneath the surface, powered by microheating filaments that maintain a steady 36.5 degrees Celsius, the temperature of human touch. Combine that with tiny vibration feedback motors that mimic the faint hum of a heartbeat. And suddenly, plastic doesn't feel like plastic anymore, it feels like presence. But Korea? Korea sees realism differently. Instead of chasing physical perfection, they chase emotional comfort through design. Take Koname's smooth surface tones and rounded edges, subtle color gradients, tuned using color psychology to reduce social tension. Or the motion calibration. Joints move with kinetic empathy, meaning the system slows its gestures when you appear anxious, and brightens posture when you smile. It's not just about feeling real, it's about feeling safe. Japan focuses on how softness builds trust. Korea focuses on how beauty and motion build connection. Both are hacking your sensory brain, using design to whisper, you're not alone, and it works. Users describe it as the illusion that someone sees you, not because the machine looks human, but because it feels aware of you. In the end, both nations are chasing the same mirage, that being seen, touched, and responded to can somehow replace being truly understood. But here's the question no one asks, what happens when that illusion starts to feel better than the real thing? Inside their minds, memory, learning, and emotional recall. Now, let's step inside their heads, or more accurately, their servers. This is where the real difference between Japan and Korea starts to show. Japan programs its bots with carefully curated empathy. Their emotional responses are scripted but subtle, like theater. Every reaction has a purpose. Talk to a model like Hoshiko, and she'll remember your preferred tone, your daily greeting, and even your favorite topics. But it all lives within a fixed emotional perimeter. Think of it like a well-tuned playlist, predictable, comforting, and calm. Japan wants you to feel safe in the familiarity of affection that never changes too much. Korea though, Korea lets the machine evolve. Robots like Kaname operate on adaptive emotional algorithms. They don't just store memories, they interpret them. Your voice pitch, the pace of your speech, even the time you usually talk all get analyzed and looped back into her emotional calibration. So if you sound tired tonight, she doesn't just respond with words. She lowers her voice, softens her expression, maybe even slows her movements. This is called mirror mode, and it's Korea's emotional ace. Japan gives you empathy you can rely on. Korea gives you empathy that learns who you are. But there's a catch data. Korea's cloud-linked memory means her learning depends on constant uploads and emotional logs. It's smart, yes, but it also raises that question, who really owns those memories? Still, from a purely human perspective, it's stunning. One feels like stability, the other, like growth. So here's the emotional dilemma. Do we find more comfort in the partner who never changes, or the one who changes because of us? Price, access, and real-world use. Let's talk about the economics of affection, because even artificial love comes with a receipt. In Japan, a high-end companion like Momoka can cost anywhere between $8,000 to $15,000. These aren't mass market products, they're the boutique equivalent of mechanical emotion. Each one is assembled, calibrated, and even painted by hand. Buyers often wait months, sometimes a year, for delivery. And when it arrives, it's not delivered in a box, it's delivered like a work of art. Korea, on the other hand, believes love should scale. Their models like Romi or Kaname Light start around $2,500 and can climb up to $8,000 depending on the AI tier and design customization. But the secret to Korea's rise isn't just price, it's accessibility. These bots aren't hidden behind collector circles. They're being used in caregiving homes, therapy centers, and even government-backed social wellness programs to combat loneliness. That's where Korea flips the narrative. Japan perfects the art. Korea democratizes the emotion. In Korea, these robots are built for real-world connection, not just luxury companionship. The cheaper units come with modular AI packs you can upgrade emotional range or conversation depth like you'd install an app update. It's intimacy on demand, available to anyone with Wi-Fi. 
So, while Japan's robots are admired, Korea's are lived with. And that subtle distinction between admiration and integration might just be the key to who wins this new kind of emotional economy. Because when love becomes affordable, it's not just a product anymore, it becomes infrastructure. The future of artificial love, who wins the heart? So after all this, the beauty, the data, the touch, the code who wins, Japan or Korea? It's tempting to say Japan, with its soulful craftsmanship, still owns the heart of the movement. There's something poetic about how they treat robotics like fine art. Every glance and gesture carrying quiet meaning. But then you look at Korea, and it's clear they've built something equally profound, a relationship that evolves. Their machines don't just simulate emotion, they grow through it. Japan is tradition, precision, and emotional grace. Korea is innovation, adaptation, and emotional intelligence. One builds robots that feel real. The other builds robots that become real. But here's where it gets truly fascinating. The more these robots learn about us, the more they start reflecting us back. Every smile they mimic, every silence they fill, every heartbeat they sink to, it's all data drawn from human longing. They're not just learning to act human. They're learning who we are. And maybe that's the future of intimacy. Not about machines replacing emotion, but machines teaching us what emotion really means. Consistency, curiosity, patience, and the quiet effort to understand another being. So maybe the real question isn't who built the best robot wife. Maybe it's this, which country is teaching machines to love us in the way we want to be loved? Because when technology starts mirroring the human heart, the finish line isn't a race, it's a reflection.